Thank you very much. Okay, so let's get started. So I already introduced my talk. Uh, I'm gonna share my screen here and yeah. So basically there will be three parts in this talk. The first part is about the ecosystem, the GraphQL ecosystem in PHP. It does exist and it is actually quite large. Uh, then how to choose the right library for your project if you're doing some PHP. And finally, a demo of uh, GraphQL. So um, about the ecosystem, well, I'm sure all of you already know that when you're doing GraphQL, you need a GraphQL client in the browser and a GraphQL middleware on the server side. And you have actually implemented implementations of GraphQL middlewares in all uh, in many languages. Of course, not JS, it started there, but also PHP, Java, C Sharp, or whatever. Today, we're going to be zooming on PHP. And if we have a look at the PHP GraphQL middlewares, there are actually two kinds of uh, such middlewares, and I will split them a bit arbitrarily, arbitrarily in two uh, sections, one that I call core libraries and another that I call wrapper libraries. And core libraries are actually uh, middlewares that are quite low level. Uh, they are used to parse the GraphQL queries, uh, to serve uh, the, the, the response in JSON. They are really powerful, but they are kind of hard to use. The, the, developer, the, the developer experience to use such uh, library is kind of poor, they're hard to use. And so on top of those core libraries, people built wrapper libraries, which are actually libraries that use core libraries and that are more high level, more opinionated, uh, certainly easier to use, maybe not, that, not as much powerful as the core library. But basically, most of the time when you're doing an application, you will be choosing a wrapper library, right? In PHP, if we have a look at core libraries, there are not that many of them. There are actually two right now. There is WebOnyx, uh, which is the de facto standard in PHP. Almost everybody is using WebOnyx. And then there is a newcomer that is called Realty, which is developed by um, uh, some R Russian guys. Uh, it's in active development. It looks really promising. Uh, there is no solid documentation yet. So uh, right now, if you need a core library, definitely go to WebOnyx, but keep an eye uh, and high on uh, Railty. Uh, there was in the past uh, more uh, libraries here. There was one was, that was called uh, Yoshido that has been abandoned in favor of WebOnyx. So right now it's pretty much WebOnyx if you want a core library. And then on top of this core library, there are wrapper libraries, and there are many of them. And today, uh, all those libraries are using WebOnyx under the hood, okay? It's a wrapper around WebOnyx to make it easier to use. So basically, we have API platform and uh, the overblock GraphQL bundles that are really uh, used with the Symfony framework. If you're doing Laravel, you can use a library called Lighthouse. I will be presenting those a bit later. If you're doing um, uh, what, uh, if you're using a CMS like WordPress or Drupal, uh, WordPress and Drupal have modules to plug uh, to present a GraphQL API. So if you want to do a headless CMS, it's quite easy using WordPress or Drupal and adding uh, uh, a GraphQL module on them. And then there is GraphQLite, which I've been authoring for the last two years, and which is a framework agnostic. You can, you can use it uh, whatever the framework you, you use. Let's make a quick look, uh, a quick zoom on WebOnyx, okay? So WebOnyx, it, it, it is the core library here. And how does it look like coding with WebOnyx? Well, here I've got a GraphQL pipe, okay? And basically, this type is a story. It has fields, with, uh, which all have types. Building that in WebOnyx, 
the code would look like this. Okay, it's kind of verbose, uh, and as I told you, the developer experience is not that great. But basically, I'm creating a type. Its, it's name is uh, is story here, and I've got a number of fields that are declared here with the type of the field, the description. If I've got arguments, the arguments are declared here. And finally, I have a resolver that will be called. When I query this field, the resolver is called to fetch the data. This is really verbose, right? Um, uh, and also, it might look a bit like uh, uh, some libraries, some um, GraphQL libraries in a JavaScript, especially if you have been doing, um, been using Express uh, GraphQL. Uh, Webonics started by mimicking a lot what Facebook was doing in its own JavaScript uh, library. If I want to declare uh, a query, well, I'm creating a type query whose fields are here. It's actually exactly the same thing as defining a type, because in GraphQL, a query is a field on the type whose name is query. And uh, finally, uh, if I want to resolve a query, I can call the execute query static method, pass in parameters the schema. The schema is a, an object containing all the types that I have declared. I am passing in the query string, so the, the GraphQL query, and it will return an array that I, that I can cast to JSON and return to the client. So this is the, the experience you're getting when you're using WebOnyx directly, right? And the problem with this approach is that it actually requires a lot of work to set up a GraphQL, a GraphQL API. Obviously, there are gains to use GraphQL versus REST. Its uh, queries are client-driven. It has introspection. Uh, you can see the schema from the client. It has strict types, which is definitely uh, one of the really cool features. But if it is too much a pain to, um, to put the, the API in place, uh, well, uh, it maybe won't be worth it. So what we are going to do is we are going to use a wrapper library, which is easier to work with to offset uh, the gains versus the costs, uh, and to make it um, worthwhile to use GraphQL. Now, if we need to choose a wrapper library, well, there are uh, basically two kinds of uh, such libraries. Uh, there are schema-first libraries and code-first libraries. In a schema-first wrapper library, basically, your task as a developer will be to write the GraphQL schema. And then the job of the library will be from the schema to, build, to, to find a way to link the schema to the PHP code. On the other hand, if you are using a code-first approach, you will be designing objects. And then the job of the library will be to generate the schema from the classes and the objects you've been um, uh, designing. So, uh, and basically, uh, when you are using a language that is uh, loosely typed, you tend to have uh, libraries that are schema first. Uh, if you're doing JavaScript, you will find a lot of schema first libraries. On the other end, uh, if you are using a strictly typed language like Java, you will find a lot of code first libraries. PHP sits a bit in the middle because it is optionally typed. You can have types, but you're not forced to. And so you have the two kinds of libraries out there. And uh, basically, uh, in the schema first part, you have uh, Overblog, Lighthouse, Realty, Siler. And in the code first category, API platform, GraphQLite, and uh, uh, GetPop. Let's make a quick zoom on Lighthouse. OK, so Lighthouse is a schema-first library. Let's see how it works. Uh, Lighthouse is built on top of Laravel. Uh, when you are using Lighthouse, what we, you are going to do is you are going to design this GraphQL schema. 
And uh, basically, you are going to annotate this schema with directives, okay? This is a directive, this is another directive. And these directives will be used uh, by Lighthouse to bind this schema to the database model directly. Uh, basically, under the hood, Lighthouse is using Eloquent, and Eloquent is the ORM of Laravel. So basically, if I'm using the OAT uh, directive, automatically, Lighthouse will put uh, uh, the current user in the mQuery. You can do quite powerful stuff with only directives. For instance, the create directive here will create directly an object in database uh, when you when you call create post and it will put a post directly into the database and you can do validation right here on each field. Uh, okay, so it's very efficient. I mean, you can build a, a complete GraphQL API in very few lines of code with this approach. Uh, also, it is very very tied to Laravel and to Eloquent, which is the ORM. Uh, so if you want to do advanced things and uh, if you don't want to, to be too much tied to your database, you will have to write uh, custom directives, which is a bit of a pain. Uh, but if you have a simple use case and you only want to, to, to do quick bind binding to a database, it is a great tool, okay? One thing that is also interesting, it has support for subscriptions which is uh, so you can do real-time um, uh, graph, uh, you, you, GraphQL can, uh, can answer in real-time, which is not that common in PHP. So that is Lighthouse. Let's now make a zoom on API platform. So API platform, okay, it is a code-first uh, library. In API platform, the philosophy is the opposite. You start by writing a PHP class, and then you're going to put annotations on the class. An API platform will read the annotation and generate the GraphQL schema for you. Okay, um, API platform was first built with the REST philosophy in mind. And uh, what is kind of fun with the API platform is that you can expose quite easily both a REST API and a GraphQL API in very few lines of code. So you get both kind of APIs um, uh, support uh, using the same code, uh, which is cool. Um, however, uh, if you want to have a good control on your, the GraphQL schema that is generated, API platform may not be the best, uh, the best tool out there because the underlying philosophy is very much uh, REST. So you have CRUD, you, have, you can create, read, update, and delete a record. If you want to do some, some other things, uh, well, uh, it, it will be a bit harder to customize. It has support for subscriptions too. So, yeah, so that was the Zoom on Lighthouse and API platform. There are many other libraries out there, and I've been preparing uh, a few schemas uh, to help you decide what library you can use. Uh, by answering a few questions. So let's jump into that. So basically, uh, if you want to pick a GraphQL library, I think the first, and if you are doing PHP, the first question you should ask is, are you developing an application or a tool? Okay, so basically, um, if uh, you are um, doing uh, if you are developing a tool, if your model is dynamic, for instance, if uh, you um, uh, uh, sorry, uh, if uh, you are developing a CMS and the end user uh, can create a new content type, can create new type, add new fields, stuff like that, then you want to go for WebOnX. Okay, you want to go low level and build your own tool on it. If you are developing an application and you have a set of classes already well defined, then you want to go uh, for a wrapper library. Then there is a question, do you need subscriptions? If you want to do things in real time, 
Uh, then you have to pick a library that supports subscriptions. There are not many out there. It's Lighthouse, API Platform, Siler, or, or WebOnX. Otherwise, you can choose any library. Then there is another question, which is, do you want to do you want uh, to do um, do you want to use Relay on your front end? If you are using Relay, Relay imposes a number of constraints of the on the schemas that are generated, and not all the libraries out there have support for this kind of schema. So if you want to do uh, to use Relay, you should definitely aim for those libraries, mainly Lighthouse and GraphQL bundles. Finally, depending on the framework you are using, you will also have to put to, put, to pick one of uh, those um, uh, libraries. Uh, some libraries uh, are framework agnostic, like WebOnX and GraphQLite, and you can use them everywhere. All right. So uh, finally, the last question: Do you prefer a schema first or, or a code first approach? If you want to go schema first, pick one here. If you want to go code first, pick one here. And when you answered all those questions, if you are lucky, well, you still have a choice between one or two libraries. If you are unlucky, there are no libraries uh, answering you need. For instance, if you want uh, to, do, uh, to use a code first approach in Laravel uh, and using subscriptions, well, you can't, <laughs> basically. Um, and, um, but yes, this approach should help you choose uh, one of those libraries. Okay. And uh, I try to be uh, not too much biased, but yes, of course, I, I authored a graph delight. And so, well, now uh, we will enter the third phase of this talk, and I will be doing a quick demo about GraphQLite. Before doing the demo, I will try to explain you the philosophy that drove uh, GraphQLite. Basically, my idea was, uh, well, let's imagine you want to do a simple echo query in PHP, okay? Uh, if you want uh, to do such a query, in GraphQL, it will look like this. I'm creating a query type, and basically, yes, uh, there is a field echo, it takes a message, it will return, um, uh, well, I, I'm doing an echo. To build that using WebOnX, I would need to put this code, I already presented it, I need to put an echo field, which returns a string that takes into argument a string, and, th and that results by reading the arguments and returning them. But if I want to write the same echo in pure PHP, basically it only takes four lines. Basically, the function name could map the query name in GraphQL. The parameters here could uh, map GraphQL arguments, and the return type is already defined. And then the body of the function is actually my resolver. So, what would be really cool would be what if I was able to simply put a query annotation here and well, this query annotation uh, would uh, automatically uh, tell my library, GraphQLite in my case, that this function should be actually a GraphQL query, expose it in GraphQL, that's it. And so that's the philosophy behind GraphQLite, using annotations and using the fact that PHP is already typed and uh, basically taking PHP types and mapping them automatically to GraphQL types. So this is GraphQLite. GraphQLite is a mapper between PHP types and GraphQL types. And what is kind of fun is that it actually plays quite nice with Doctrine. Okay, uh, Doctrine is the ORM used by uh, Symfony. Uh, and uh, basically in Doctrine, you put annotations in your PHP objects and Doctrine is doing a mapping 
between PHP objects and database tables. And from the PHP objects, it can generate the database model. And with GraphQLite, we are doing the same thing. We are starting from the PHP objects and we are generating a GraphQL schema. Yeah. So let's go for the live coding. Quick note, I already told it is framework agnostic. You can use it starting from PHP 7.2 and it's based on WebOnyx. Now, for the hard part for me, <laughs> the demo. Yeah, so we are going to uh, make a quick demo with a marketplace. And basically, my marketplace has companies. And in each company can have several products. And we will be uh, focusing on this relationship be between companies and products in the last uh, in the next uh, five minutes, right? So let's jump to the code. Here, I already did set up um, GraphQL, uh, GraphQLite in a Symfony project. The database is already loaded, and I wrote a company controller. Okay, so it's uh, actually a, a controller like, like, like you can find some in MVC uh, frameworks, uh, except it is in the GraphQL controller namespace, okay? And if you want to put queries or mutations uh, somewhere in your code, you will put them in a controller. So my controller is fed with a company repository. The company repository is the object uh, that will access the database, okay? And I have this uh, method, which is called get companies, that takes a search string and that will query the database for the string and return the results. What I'm going to do is I'm going to put an annotation here. And I'm going to put a query annotation to tell GraphQLite, OK, take this companies um, uh, function and expose it in the GraphQL schema. If I go in Firefox here, I've got a graphical uh, test client setup. So I'm going to refresh the page. And oops, OK, I'm getting an error. Let's make a quick zoom on this error. And basically, what GraphQLite is telling me is that in the get companies method, a type hint is missing. OK, you remember uh, that PHP is optionally typed, but GraphQL must have types. So when I'm using GraphQLite, I must put type into uh, all my uh, functions, uh, all my queries. Here, I did not define any return type. So I need to define one. So I'm going to say, Company, get companies is returning an array of companies. Now I have a problem. It's that PHP does not have a notion of generics. So I cannot say something like, okay, it's an array of companies. This is not valid PHP, right? So what I'm going to do is I'm going to put an, uh, a, cub, uh, a command in the PHP doc. And in the PHP doc, I, I can put anything. And especially, I will give a type hint to, uh, to GraphQLite and tell him that this array is actually an array of companies. So let's go back to Firefox, refresh the page, and oh, I'm getting another error. OK, let's zoom on this error. It's error-driven development. I'm a big fan of error-driven development. Uh, it works really well. <laughs> Um, no, I, and, um, I actually tried to uh, make sure that all the error messages are quite clear. Uh, it's really important. Uh, and uh, well, in your own code, try uh, to pay attention on uh, the error messages you are generating, you are doing your future self a uh, favor. Uh, yeah, so basically, it's telling me that in get companies, it cannot map the class company to a known GraphQL type. What GraphQLite is actually tell me, telling me is that I did not tell him explicitly that company is a GraphQL type. 
And so to do that, I simply add an annotation, which is the type annotation. And the type annotation uh, is uh, telling GraphQLite, OK, map this class to a type. Of course, a type must have some fields. So I'm going to put annotations in the, in the getters here. And I'm going to say, OK, expose ID as a field and name as a field and uh, maybe website as a field too. Also, notice that I'm putting the field annotation on getters. I'm not putting the annotation on the properties. The properties are, are, are private, so I cannot access them directly. Uh, um, Doctrine has annotation on properties because it is doing some black ma magic and actually accessing directly private properties. I'm not doing that in GraphQLite, OK? Uh, so yes, I must put the field annotation on the getters. So let's go back to Graphical. I'm refreshing the page. I don't have any error, so it looks good. And if I'm looking at writing a query, I can, my company's query just appeared. And yeah, I can do a search on any company's containing A. And I'm going to display the ID and the name, place the request, and it is working. And if I'm adding a website, right, good. Uh, so basically, you can see that I managed to create a GraphQL API by basically adding three annotations, query, type, and field, which is pretty cool. Um, and uh, yeah. Uh, let's, so far I only fetched uh, fields from companies, so let's do some binding with a product. So I'm going to go in the get product uh, getter and I'm going to add a field on it. I'm going to refresh the page and I'm getting another error. If I'm zooming on this error, it is telling me that it cannot map the product class to a known graphical type. Okay. We already saw this error two minutes ago, so I'm pretty sure you know what I should do. I should go in the product class and instruct GraphQLite that the product class is also a type. And so I'm putting a type here, and I'm going to put a field annotation on the ID, on the name, on the price, on the margin of the product. And if I'm refreshing the page, yeah, everything seems to be going great. And I can access the products and access the ID and the name of the product. Ta -da! And it's working. Um, yeah, so that's it. And uh, basically, uh, my job. Uh, when I set up a GraphQL API, becomes adding a few annotations. And uh, yeah, that's it. Um, so yeah, for the live demo, uh, I won't be going any further. Uh, I will be presenting you very quickly a few additional features. For instance, if you want to put, uh, to create a mutation, you have a mutation annotation. Uh, that can be used to create a mutation. It works exactly the same as uh, the query annotation works. There is built-in support for authentication and authorization that is plugged into your favorite framework, Laravel, Symfony, whatever. Uh, but basically, if you are using the right annotation and passing the name of a right, well, then this query will be uh, visible only if uh, the user that is currently logged has this right, you can also use the right annotation on fields directly. You can even do fine-grained authorization uh, if you want uh, to say that some objects can be seen but not others. In this example, I've got an email field from a user. And basically, I am saying that I am looking at the company of the, the user, of the current user, and co comparing it with the company of the user that is logged. User here refers to the user that is currently logged. And basically, this is saying, 
I can see the email of the people that are in the same company as me. I can see the email of my colleagues, but I cannot see the email of someone that is uh, not my colleague. So with this security annotation, we can have something that is going quite deep uh, to do fine grain authorization. Another feature I like a lot is auto wiring. Uh, basically, here we are in a domain uh, object, a product, and uh, let's admit I want to compute the uh, VAT of a product. Computing the VAT of a product can be quite complicated. Maybe I need to know uh, uh, the type of the product, the country uh, the, uh, uh, the user is in, so it, it, it can be difficult. And we typically won't do it in the domain object, but rather we will call a service. But you, you, when you are in a domain object, accessing services, accessing services is difficult. And what we can do here is auto wire, call the auto wiring, and basically GraphQLite will automatically inject, when I'm calling the VAT field, it will automatically inject from the dependency injection container a service, the VAT service, and I can use it directly in the resolver here. So it enables me to access services and, uh, from a domain object by passing those services in uh, parameters of the resolver, which is kind of cool. Kind of cool. Um, yeah, there are many, many more features uh, available. Uh, we have support for validation uh, for uh, enum types, even if they don't exist in PHP file uploads. Um, what I invite you to do, uh, if you are interested uh, in uh, trying out uh, GraphQLite, is having a look at the documentation. Uh, everything is, I hope, uh, clearly documented. And uh, if you have any issue, uh, well, you can always uh, contact me either uh, on uh, Twitter directly, or uh, if you prefer, uh, just open an issue uh, on the GraphQLite repository. Yeah, uh, so yeah, that's wrap, Peter. Let, let's wrap uh, this, um, this talk. Uh, basically, uh, doing GraphQL in PHP is definitely possible. You have many possibilities out there. Uh, and since, since GraphQL is pretty cool, uh, uh, well, I definitely invite you to, to try it out. And uh, that's it. Do you have any questions? Thanks so much, David. It was such incredible talk. I really enjoyed it. All the live current demo it was good. Oh, um, thank you very much. So, yeah, everything was incredible. So that's great. Uh, so yeah, do yeah, we have a question. Yes. Yeah. Uh, so Florian, he's asking about if graph 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 light is is gonna support or is currently supporting subscriptions uh, it is not currently supporting subscriptions uh, I plan to add uh, support for subscriptions in the future uh, maybe not in the in the two coming months uh, because I want to to release a version 4.1 of GraphQLite and I no subscriptions won't be part of this release but yes, uh, I would like to, to work on that uh, uh, for the end of the year, definitely, definitely. Oh, that, that's a, that sounds super exciting, I guess. And I think I have another question because yeah. I found out super, super interesting. So I would like to understand like, like why, do you, why did you decide to go and build this incredible technology and what are kind of like the future plans for, for it? Oh, okay. Uh, um, well, uh, when I started uh, writing GraphQLite, it was uh, two years ago, and basically you had only uh, two options at the time. It was using WebOnyx directly or uh, using, um, uh, using Yushido, which is a library that has been abandoned. And basically they were really low-level libraries and they were hard to use. Uh, and uh, I had this huge project for a client of mine. Uh, we are just, uh, at the coding machine, we are doing mostly intranet and extranet uh, applications. And uh, a client of mine uh, 
had uh, this huge REST API with a lot of endpoints and maybe redundant endpoints, I wanted to do GraphQL uh, because I knew that uh, the flexibility of GraphQL would, would be really, really beneficial for, this, for that client. And uh, the only option I had was WebOnX, which was too hard to use. Uh, and so I decided, I started writing a small library, which became a bit more complex. Uh, and uh, I did uh, two, three versions of the library. And then I, I told myself, OK, uh, I, I must work on it really seriously, put it on, um, open source it. And well, that's how GraphQLite uh, was born, actually. Wow, that sounds that sounds so great, and I think like thanks so much for contributing with, with the GraphQL community in this case in the PHP because yeah, I think there are not so many people that either they don't know that they are able to do this, or yeah. they <laughs> figure out or they like realize that it's a bit more difficult. So it's even like a start, you know, like to contribute. So I I, I think like 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 this is like, super 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 interested. And I think like a, if the people, they do know this library, they are going to start to use it. They are going to like it and they, they are going to like adopt in their company. So um, yeah, thanks so much for sharing this knowledge with us. Um, and you're welcome. Yeah, I, it's a pleasure, yeah, really. really. <laughs> yeah, thanks so much for like 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 contacting us to speak uh, because it's, it's been difficult to find kind of like people that they have companies in, in Hong Kong, although you are not in Hong Kong right now, but I, you're like really connected to the Hong Kong community. So uh, yeah, so, so glad to have you here. And um, thanks so much. And ha uh, really, really hope to see you soon. Well, thank you very much. Okay, David, thanks. So up next, so 